Hello, my name is Shimin, and I work for DocCloud in Shanghai. I'm also is a Kubernetes Signal reviewer and a maintainer of a Quark project. Uh, I'm Yuan Chen. I'm a principal engineer at NVIDIA. So Chris talk reminded me my first KubeCon in China, the first one in Shanghai six years ago. And if my math still correct, that's my 12 KubeCon and also 12 talk. But the first and the keynote is such a great order. So during the last six and seven years, a lot of us have witnessed the tremendous growth of the cloud native technology, Kubernetes, KubeCon, and the community. With the emerging AI technology, in particular the large language model and all this generative AI, we have a significant opportunity that presents great challenges as well. In today's talk, to me, we provide an overview and an introduction of Quark, an open source toolkit for creating and managing large scale Kubernetes cluster using fake nodes for testing. I will then discuss how Quark supports the error injection and the failure simulations for fault tolerance. We conclude the talk with a summary. Today, I'm excited to talk about Quark. Let's start with an overview of the Kubernetes cluster architecture. As you can see in the diagram, Kubernetes, Kubernetes cluster include a control plan and many nodes. They also have a metric server that collect a mesh for collect for the Kubernetes. This is a overview of Quark. How you want to build a big Kubernetes cluster that didn't have a resource to do it? Maybe you just maybe you just want to want to test in scheduling. In which case, you don't need a real container. With Quark, you can easily simulate a node, pod, and any Kubernetes object, and you and it can, can work with any runtime, like a net, like a natural binary, Docker, Podman, Calendar, Mini Kuber, and uh, existing cluster, etc. And you can run on any op, can run any operating system like uh, Linux, Mac OS, and uh, Windows, and work with any Kubernetes tools. Now let's take a look at the Quark controller. This is actually a regular Kubernetes controller. It's mainly used to simulate a Kubernetes object and simulate the behavior of a Kubernetes. Basically, you can simulate any behavior of Kubernetes. This is great for testing, scheduling, large scale cluster. Mm, you don't need a real Kubernetes. We also provide a command line tool called Quark Control. These tools help you to create a cluster on your laptop easily, like a can. Uh, you you can use a command to create a Quark cluster in a second. Just integrate a Kubernetes control plan component and uh, use, some, use a container runtime to create a cluster. It can also directly use native binary cell to start the progress on your laptop to create a cluster. If it's running natively on Linux, Mac OS, Windows without containers, Coca can also simulate a Kubernetes, a Kubernetes resource matrix for the metric server. This allows you to simulate resource usage as needed, which is great for testing HPA, BPA, cluster auto scaling, and the thing also. Here is a picture of the cluster I, I created the Coca control with a Kubernetes dashboard. It, it has thousands of nodes and 10,000 of pods. 
it can have a CPU and the memory use information. It, it look a, it look like like a real cluster, right? You can actually task the contents of the simulated Kubernetes cluster as much as you like. Uh, look at the resource footprint on the Docker dashboard. Docker uh, of the of, of, of the above cluster, uh, the Coke controller uses only 450 megabytes. If you don't enable the resource using simulation, it use uh, even less than uh, um, the 100 megabytes. Now let me show you a demo of the core control. We are we will use the core control to create the cluster and uh, use the skill sub command to create the node and uh, to create the pod here. You can see the pod is running and uh, the node it also is really has a look at the pod log. And the see the information here can be any logs as simulated by Cork. Now let's enter the pod. We actually enter the pod of the Cork controller. And uh, enter the another pod, and the first time they are actually enter the steam code controller. Yeah, no container is actually created. So all in behavior is stimulated by code. Now let's waiting for the metro server to get the resource huge. Let's take a look at the node that we have. We have actually cracked. the pod is the same. Now let's 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 try to change the load of the pod via annotation. Now wait again. Let's wait for the metric server to do its work. Okay, we can see the node's node is changing and the pod is changing too. Okay, so, so to summarize, the core controller is a core component. It simulates the life cycle of node, pod, and all the Kubernetes objects. It can also simulate the, the Kubernetes metrics and the API. Core uses very few resource and you can even simulate any Kubernetes any cluster on your want on your laptop the core control help to create the manage create and manage Kubernetes cluster in addition the feature introduced earlier there are many useful features such as the dump cluster snapshot and store cluster snapshot which allow you repeat the Scenarios over and over again without having to rebuild the cluster. Now let's translate it for you. Thank you, Shumin. So the key takeaway is Cork is a tool can simulate and behave to some extent to the real and the Kubernetes clusters from user perspective. So you can use for all different kind of the functionality testing evaluation. Uh, evaluation. So I I follow or steal this and uh, yeah diagram from my colleague uh, and uh, at previous and KubeCon. So in large scale and uh, GPU clusters, it's very complex system from hardware to interconnect topology to the software stack. Right, we introduce a lot of new components across all the Kubernetes and the software stack. So in such a complex and uh, system. Failures and errors are inevitable. So also compared to traditional clusters, the failure costs are very high, very expensive, because a lot of training job, for example, 
the failure can propagate. So the failure can cause and uh, cascading and the failures. So for example, if one job and fails, and you may have to restart all the jobs from the scratch. So the fault tolerance is very important, or even more critical than traditional and uh, clusters, larger scale clusters. Of course, we know GPU so far is still very expensive. So we need the fault tolerance solution, but how to test it? So in talk, talk provides two functions. One is at the node level, we can inject the errors and the faults to simulate the failures at the node level to the fake load. At quarter level, we also can inject the error and the failures to the components. One of the use case, let's look at a little bit more detail. So node level, we already know there are a number of the components already provide some, for example, the node farm detect MPD and NVIDIA, the DCGM data center GPU manager. So all this information here just uh, snapshots all kinds of the events, right, in the system. We could inject this into the fake load to simulate the failure. The second one is at the port level. We can inject that error to any kind of containers by specifying the component name, exit code, and all the message, error message, and the reason. So this is, a, we have an interesting use cases. For example, you run a job, you may want to test it. Okay, let me, sorry, too fast. Okay, so here, for example, we can specify which components you want to the inject the error. Also the exit code and uh, the error message. That's useful and uh, you could simulate kind of the, like the pre-flight check and the pre-log check. So now let me give a quick demo. We run and uh, start a mini cube clusters. You can see now just a single control node and the mini cube. So the only thing we need is just uh, and uh, start a clock controller. Now I create a fake GPU node. Basically, just apply a Java file. This is a spec with from a real production system. It's a A100 GPU. So now I just apply and uh, this Java file and then create a fake load. You can create. Now we have additional virtual and the GPU load. Here we quickly show the GPU and the spec. Of course, there are tons of other information. Now I create a node. How we inject an error? You just need to annotate the port with additional annotation values. So let's see, just like this. I want to inject the error to this NICO test. Then I want an error message exit code. Also, we can specify the delay between the port pending and the port failures. You can specify even randomly with some data. So now you can see it's still pending because I specified five seconds. Now you see it's filled exactly as what we expected. You said the NICO test field, the networking communication field, right? And uh, you got the exit code three, you got the error message. So this way and we can support and uh, the port tolerant solutions just to see how you evaluate. Now, yeah, uh, we deleted the ports and we deleted the uh, uh, virtual nodes. So then you just uh, come back to a regional and the cluster state. So at NVIDIA, and one of the use cases, and uh, we use this in the fault injection to evaluate our fault tolerance and human management scheduling. For example, for we call it a proactive and fault tolerance scheduling. We want to evaluate before we place a port on a node, we want to pre-flight check whether or not this node or the network communication works properly. If something is wrong, then we want to place the port on the node. How we evaluate? So we can use the port function to inject the error to the init container to simulate the pre-flight check error. Another thing is more on the, on the wrong time, reactive, right? If the node fails, then we can reschedule or migrate and move the jobs. So we can use the port functionality, inject the error to the node to simulate the node failures. Yeah, port has been widely used uh, yeah, across a lot of projects and uh, in the community. 
呃，库克库克哈斯登有的库到哈斯登有的到考的 net past testing management stress testing。Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in media, we mainly use it to evaluate and developing a lot of different and the functions for the GPU and the clusters. So also, it has been widely used uh, and uh, by the community project. To summarize, yeah, Cork is very and uh, popular and the tools to supporting this larger scale testing. And uh, the future work, of course, given the GPU, AI, all this and the new stuff. So we need, we want to enhance the code to better support, for example, even some GPU component from the GPU operator and all these senior and monitoring tools. Can we simulate their behavior? Also, we want to look at how to support them, the even larger scale federation of uh, multiple code across multiple clusters. If you want to learn more and check out all these previous talks and the reference and the information. We'd like to thank all colleagues at Dalcard, Nvidia, as well as all the contributors from the community. Yeah, thank you for attending the talk, and a special thanks to the conference organizer and the supporting teams. Uh, one thing I want to mention: yeah, a night tour of the Victoria Harbor is fantastic. I highly recommend it, either by boat or by foot. And、uh, we hope everyone and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much.